Well, hello, friends. Welcome to an episode of Real Truth Real Quick this week, where we talk about life, leadership, and the world we live in. I'm Todd, and this is my friend Gary Hagen, who is president of the International Justice Mission. And we are going to talk today about a question related to something that you may not even think is a problem anymore, and it's simply this. Is modern slavery real? Gary, we did an episode on what's the biblical view of slavery, but I think a lot of people only limit slavery to thinking about what happened in Americas and, and in England in the, in the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries. But is modern slavery still a problem? I think every thinking Christian should really understand just three things about modern day slavery. First, that it's more vast than ever. That is, there's more people in slavery today than in any other time in human history. Wow. That's hard to get our mind around, but if you imagine that about 11 million people were extracted as slaves from Africa during 400 years of the transatlantic slave trade. That's one-fourth of the number of people who are in slavery right now in our world. So 40 million people are in slavery today. Correct. Currently. And, and you're not talking metaphorically, like, you know, they have a bad job. No, this is not even sweatshops or a, a, abusive situations. This is where someone's forced to labor by violence and terror. So they're forced into working on agricultural facilities or brick factories or rice mills. And one of the ugliest forms of it is, of course, sex trafficking, where people are actually forced into prostitution. So it's about a $150 billion business in annual profits every year. So this is more vast than ever. But secondly, it's just as brutal as ever. And this is your point about don't think metaphorical slavery. Uh, think of people who are suffering uh, all the horrific violence you would have pictured in your history book where you turned a page and there was a man with scars across his back. I could bring in thousands of uh, victims of slavery that we've personally worked with who would be able to show you their scars of that same kind of violence. We have clients who had their hands cut off because mm -hmm. they tried to run away from their slave owner. So it's more vast than ever. It's just as brutal as ever. But the third point is it's actually more stoppable than ever. Mm -hmm. For the first time, it's illegal everywhere in the world. Mm. It's concentrated itself in a vast scale in just a few countries. Every country has a little bit of it, so there's even slavery here in the United States. But if you solved all the slavery in the United States and all the European Union countries, you'd still have 99% of the problem. 70% of the problem is in just 10 countries in the world, and they tend to be countries where they don't have law enforcement to actually enforce the laws. So slavery's real, it's vast, it's brutal, but it's actually stoppable now. So you just said that there's still slavery in the United States right now. That was going right. to blow their minds, a blue mind, except just yesterday, Gary, just a few minutes from here, 20 minutes from here, there was a couple that brought over a little girl from Guinea in Africa when she was five. She's been living with them for 11 years, and our Justice Department just arrested them because even though they're raising other kids, this girl was in their home, not being educated, was basically house labor for them and slavery. They were just arrested. But explain that to them. Yeah. There's still slavery in the United States now. Sure. <coughs> Tucked away in some of the darker corners of our communities, there's going to be, first of all, for sure, women who've been trafficked into sex slavery. Um, they're going to be in the, uh, in the karaoke bars or in the uh, strip clubs or sometimes those massage parlors. Those are just fronts for women are being held in sex slavery. And they're not there because they're choosing to do that. You're saying these are women that are they're being physically intimidated and imposed upon. Correct. And they're being forced to do this by violence. One of the great things, though, is we have good law enforcement in America so that if communities care to go after this in their community and they prioritize it, local law enforcement can do a great job of it. The problem around the world, where 99% of the problem is, is that law enforcement is actually protecting it because they're being bribed by the local slave owners to protect this. So what it requires is that everybody in the world raise their voice to say, it's no longer acceptable in the 21st century that we have slavery because this is a totally preventable um, disease. Okay, so this is what's so amazing. This is what IJM does. If folks who are watching aren't familiar with International Justice Mission, there's a vehicle for them to jump on board and to support you and to be involved in many ways. And we're going to actually, we filmed another episode called What Can a Christian Do Locally to Deal with a Systematic World Problem that they should watch? And we'll be linked to this episode. But, but tell them about IJM and what you're doing. Tell them about what you did specifically in the Philippines in uh, yeah. concert with the Gates Foundation. Yeah. 
So IJM is now the largest anti-slavery organization in the world. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we actually rescue folks out of those places of slavery by sending undercover investigators in, finding where they're, where they're being held. Then we work with local law enforcement to get them out and get them to long-term aftercare. Because if you just rescue someone from slavery and don't take care of them, they won't be able to make the transition. But what we also want to do is actually drive down the amount of slavery there is. So what you were mentioning is a project we did in the Philippines with the Gates Foundation, where we worked in three different cities, and we were able to reduce the actual measurable level of sex trafficking of children by between 75 or 85 percent in just about a four or five year period of time. So it just shows you that the slave traffickers in the 21st century, they're not brave people. And when they start to go to jail, they will leave the poor and the children alone. Listen, I don't know if you guys watching this, go back and listen to that stat again. The goal with the Gates Foundation was 20%. Right. You guys got it down systematically down to about 75 to 85%. And those aren't just numbers, those are individual kids. Those are lives, those are people that are trapped in slavery. Listen, as a believer, one of the things that we know, Isaiah, when he's talking to us and that God's giving us the admonition about what we should do in light of everything, he, first of all, he says, do justice, right? In, 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 um, in, in Micah 6, 8, love kindness and walk humbly with God. But this is what he says in Isaiah 117, right? It's a familiar passage where he says, listen, okay, learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. That's what IJM is doing. That's what you can do by syncing up with them. Look at the other episode that talks about what you can do locally to deal with a systematic worldwide problem. And join us next time for another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.